When it comes to the exploration of the solar system, astronomers are solely responsible for the discovery of two large planets that would have been unknown to the ancients. These planets are Uranus, which was discovered in 1781, and Neptune, which was discovered in 1846. On the other hand, this is not due to a lack of effort. There was a time when people believed that hypothetical planets like Phaeton, which is a world that is said to exist between Mars and Jupiter, and Vulcan, which is a planet that is closer to the Sun than even Mercury, were very real objects. There are, without a doubt, dwarf planets like Pluto and Eris that are concealed beyond Neptune, and there is a possibility that there is even a much elusive planet called Planet Nine that a great number of astronomers are still searching for today. On the other hand, the discovery of Uranus and Neptune, two ice giants, has led to the conclusion that our solar system is now complete. There are eight primary planets that orbit the Sun. Or are there any? Due to the fact that there is an area that lies right behind the sun that we are unable to see, is it possible that there is a planet that we do not know about on the other side of our star? It is interesting to note that this peculiar concept was actually put up thousands of years ago. Counter-Earth is the name of the idea, while Antichthon is the name of the planet that it describes. Is it possible that there is a large planet that orbits the sun in the same direction as Earth and is hidden behind it? First and foremost, how did this theory come to be? What kind of effects would this hypothetical planet have on the rest of the solar system if it were to actually go into existence? Hello everyone, welcome to Space Time. If you find that you love watching my videos, then make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you are never miss an upload. Philolaus, a Greek philosopher, is credited with having proposed the possibility that there is another planet in our solar system that is trapped in an orbit that causes it to remain forever behind the Sun. This concept dates back at least 2,400 years. Antichthon was the name he brought up when he suggested the existence of a counter-Earth. Philosopher Philolaus held the belief that the universe functioned in accordance with the principles of harmony and balance. The Earth and the other heavenly bodies seemed to revolve around a massive fire that was located at the center of the universe. However, according to this hypothesis, there must be another Earth that is diametrically opposed to ours in order to preserve the equilibrium of the cosmos. His conception of Antichthon was that it was a celestial body that was concealed from human gaze and that it resided on the other side of the center fire. As a hypothetical counterpart to our own planet, this hypothetical counter-Earth played an important part in preserving the symmetry and harmony of the cosmos. That is, it served as a cosmic parallel to our globe. It should come as no surprise that our knowledge of the solar system is significantly more advanced than that of ancient Greece. There is still the question of whether or not there is a planet that has not yet been identified that is located directly behind the Sun. In any case, we are unable to see that portion of space from where we are standing. In spite of the fact that it is an intriguing concept, one that is fueled by the imagination of the human mind, if there were an undiscovered planet immediately behind the sun, we would have seen it by now. For several decades, humans have been sending spacecraft into the solar system. A significant number of these spacecraft are designed to observe the sun from a variety of perspectives. And as far as we know, no such world has ever been seen. What if, however we only fail to notice it, However, even this can be explained away because a counter-Earth would have a gravitational effect on everything that is in its vicinity, and as a result researchers would be able to identify its influence on Earth, other planets, and notably our satellites. If there was something on the opposite side of the Sun that was exerting gravitational pull on planets like Mercury or Venus, for example, they would be aware of it. Despite the fact that we have never ever seen them, we are able to detect huge bodies within the solar system due to the gravitational influence that each item in the system exerts. For instance, the observations that led to the discovery of Neptune were based on predictions that were made because of the gravitational effects that it had on Uranus. Therefore, perhaps a more intriguing question is not whether or if a counter-Earth exists, but rather whether or not it is even possible for such a thing to exist. The answer to this question is yes, such a planet may exist, but it would be concealed from our view on the other side of the Sun. This is the answer from a strictly theoretical perspective. On the other hand, taking into account everything else that is also orbiting the Sun, it would not remain concealed for particularly long. It is important to remember that the solar system is comprised of more than just the Earth and the Sun, 
It also includes a multitude of other celestial objects that are all traveling around in a dynamic cosmic dance. If, for instance, the planet Antichthon were to unexpectedly materialize in this position behind the Sun, it would only remain there for a relatively short period of time. Because of the gravitational pull of the other planets in the solar system, its orbit would be thrown off balance. The counter-Earth and the Earth would ultimately catch up with each other as a consequence of this which could possibly lead to a collision between the two. Therefore, a counter-Earth would have an effect on the motions of those neighboring objects which would enable us to discover it. However, the opposite is also true. The motions of those neighboring objects would also have an effect on the counter-Earth. Venus, for instance, travels at a distance of 40 million kilometers or 25 million miles from Earth every 584 days before reaching its closest approach. It is reasonable to assume that Venus would also approach the counter-Earth in such a close proximity. Due to the fact that Venus contains around 80% of the mass of Earth, the gravitational impact of Venus would bring the hidden world to a location where we would be able to glimpse it directly after even a few hundred visits. In addition, Mercury, Mars, and even Jupiter would be contributing to that effect during the entire process. However, there are locations within the orbit of our planet that are known to remain stable. These locations are referred to as Lagrange points. It was speculated that this hypothetical planet would be situated on the opposite side of the Sun, which is where one of these planets is located. Within our solar system, there are locations known as Lagrange points. These are the points at which the gravitational attraction of any two planetary bodies, in conjunction with the velocity of their orbit, come together to form a state of equilibrium. It refers to locations in space that are stable due to the influence of gravity. Because the forces are in equilibrium, the objects that we send to these locations either have a tendency to remain there naturally or can be maintained there with a little amount of energy. The James Webb Space Telescope, which orbits the Sun at Earth's Lagrange point number 2 is the most well-known example of how the National Aeronautics and Space Administration or NASA has utilized these Lagrange points. This enables the telescope to maintain its orbit around the Sun while remaining in alignment with Earth, so reducing the amount of fuel it needs to remain in that orbit. Small naturally formed objects which are referred to as Earth's Trojans can even be found orbiting within these locations. Ever since their discovery, there have been only two Earth Trojans, both of which have been found within Lagrange Point 4. Regarding the Earth-Sun Lagrange Point 3, what are your thoughts? Located on the opposite side of the orbit of the Earth, would there be a concealed object in that location? In contrast to Lagrange Points 4 and 5, which are known to be stable, Lagrange Points 1, 2, and 3 are not at all stable. After a period of time, an object that was situated at one of these spots would, once again move away as a result of the gravitational attraction exerted by the other planets. You can think of it as being metastable, like a ball that is sitting on a hill. If you give it a tiny push or bump, it will begin to roll away from you. For this reason, we are certain that there is not a planet that has not yet been identified that is hiding on the opposite side of the sun. In addition, despite the fact that it is an intriguing concept, it is one that should be reserved for the realms of scientific research. In spite of this, the counter-Earth theory, which was initially conceived of thousands of years ago, did present a number of intriguing concepts, some of which undoubtedly inspired subsequent philosophers and contributed to the establishment of a foundation for discussions concerning the nature of the cosmos. It is my hope that you found this video to be enjoyable. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. There are many more videos to come. I appreciate you taking the time to watch and I hope to see you in the next video.